before we get started, I want to give a great big thank you to Chris at World's Worst Fishing again. Our subscription rate has more than doubled. Um, it's just fantastic. All you people who have come from World's Worst Fishing and given us a chance to um, entertain you with some of our videos. Thank you so much for coming and joining. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun and I enjoy the comment section. Uh, hope I can answer questions if you have any about things and helping people trying to build their own lures. It's a lot of fun. And then also I want to say thank you to all my original subscribers who've been with me, some of you from the beginning. So very grateful, very thankful. Okay, this next one has got me excited in kind of a unique way. Um, several months ago, I found this channel. The channel, YouTube channel, is Justin Menendez. I'll put a link on my channel. He doesn't know I'm doing this, but this young man, <laughs> I'm telling you, he fishes like I'd fish if I was in Florida. He's got a GNU, and he goes after these snook and tarpon and redfish. These fish... They're incredibly powerful. Uh, they're in skinny water. You can sight fish them. Uh, they are just, they'll strike a, type, a top water lure like nothing else. I mean, it's just, they've got this huge mouth that opens up. And it's like, go pow! It's almost like a, star, a striper on steroids. <coughs> or a large mouth that's been run through a genetic experiment or something. <laughs> so anyway, found his channel, started watching it. Fell in love with it. It's just a great channel. I think you'll enjoy it if you go check it out. If you if you like big game fish, striking lures and stuff, he's got some great footage. This young man, he goes in there and he puts it on him. He'll <laughs> he hooked this like 40, I don't know, 42 inch snook, and, and he hooked it and it took him underneath the dock. Well, he went underneath the dock and then it took him around the dock, so he went back around underneath. He just he finally landed that sucker. He just don't give up. And he just gets some great footage, got a great passion, um, just a great young man all around, you can tell. So anyway, he doesn't know I'm going to do this. Now, I did, I did drop a comment in one of his videos and said, hey, man, I want to make you a lure. And he just said, cool. Uh, so I don't know that he'll, you know, he may get this lure and say, what's this, and throw it away. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I'm hoping that won't be the case. I'm hoping that I'm going to make a lure that looks so delicious that he's going to say, man, i got to try that. We're going to make us about a 7-inch mullet. And it's going to be a uh, topwater wake bait. And uh, I'm hoping that he can get some footage of some of them big girls coming up and just hammering that thing. Because I'm telling you, he hooks some big fish. And they'll go, go check out his channel. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the build. Okay, I'm upset. <clears throat> My printer ain't working. Brought up an image of a finger mullet, and I'm just going to take a piece of paper and put it over top of it and see if I can't trace it without moving it. Because you can still sometimes do the paper. <laughs> okay, I'm just darkening these lines up a little bit so I can see what I'm doing when I go to cut it. And we just freehand some details. You're probably saying, why is he cutting that tail out? He's just going to cut it off. Because I am just going to cut it off. But I just want to sit and look at it for a minute and just see if I feel good about it. You've got to feel good about what you're doing. Somebody asked about my little table here. Um, basically what I did, let me back up here so you can see it all. I just took me a Luan door, you know, a cheap Luan door. And I cut, you know, three holes in it. Got one for the table saw, which is, you know, I've got a little guide here that I made that I can you know, adjust for ripping. The router is just basically a, you know, Bosch router. It's a Bosch router that I've attached to a plate in there. And I put receptacles all around it, you know, I've got some at each end. I've got a set of receptacles there. And there, just got a, a DeWalt jigsaw mounted to a metal plate up in there. And you can see up in there that I, I used some uh, wood, some wood reinforcement around the holes, so it's you know nice and strong. But I wanted to keep it. The reason I chose a Luan doors, I I needed about that size of workspace, 
but I also wanted it to be light. So I can actually pick this thing up by myself and load up my truck, take it to a job site. I do construction, used to. So anyway, there she is. I really don't have plans for it. Um, there's some similar stuff on the internet. Uh, so if you're gonna build stuff like fatlings and mystery swim baits and Jesus lizards and things like that, you gotta have one. <laughs> Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wait a minute. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. I'm just going to basically sand the profile down real quick, get it ready, take back to the saw to cut the actual taper. I'm going to want this thing to taper to the T a little bit, but they stay pretty meaty. Just kind of dives off right there at the end. All that are kind of uh, more of a rounder shaped fish. Kind of reminds me of me a little bit that belly <laughs> I'm not gonna take anything off the head because their heads are wide they're kind of thick and and wide so what little bit I need to take off on the head I'll do that when I'm whittling and sanding so we need to go to the belt sander and work this out a little bit I'm just gonna work him down there a little bit smooth flat ways I'm not gonna try to round it at all yet just flattening her out okay Let's uh, whittle this bad boy up a little bit. <laughs> you know, you'll see me carving this white wood with a razor knife, and it works great for the most part. Um, I do wish the blade was a little bit longer at times, but one thing that's really a, kind of an inconvenience is if the blade. I'm sorry, the handle part is too thick. You can't get the blade flat against what you're working on. So I recommend a razor knife with a very thin body if you can. Okay, got him to the shape that I like. I want to go ahead and, and basically do the head features right now. And so I like, you know, finding the center. And I'm basically just eyeballing. I say, well, that looks like the center of the nose. And I come back and it looks like the center of the tail. And then I'm just connecting it, you know, working my way down through there. Because right there is where I'll cut in <clears throat> for those fins, right there and there, you know. Um. And as I do this, I start noticing, like, well, I'm not exactly symmetrical. I need to take down a little bit right in here. So putting your center lines on really kind of helps your eye pick up the... Uh, discrepancies and symmetry don't want no discrepancies on your mullet man remember back in the day when we would wear a mullet <laughs> I used to have <laughs> I used to have a red mullet man and uh, it stuck out it was cool it was really cool <laughs> At least I thought it was cool at the time. Now I see those pictures and I think, you know, I could have been a clown. <laughs> I always, my dad lost all the hair on the top of his head. And my mom, my mom was a beautician. And so she used to give him uh, what are called perms, you know, a permanent curl in his hair because he had real straight hair and it was all gone on top and so the sides would just kind of stick out he didn't want to shave his head he didn't think his head looked good shaved so he he kind of had a perm and i said dang it gum if i grow up to be like my dad <laughs> and i don't have any hair on top of my head and i get a perm <laughs> you see where i'm going bozo um Scoot over, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> I don't know. Some, you know, that's just, I don't know. I shouldn't laugh about stuff like that, I guess. You know, hey, we don't laugh when I break down and cry. <laughs> okay, the mouth on a mullet. 
Now see the mouth on the mullet's just a little bit on the low side, you know, below center. So my center point would be right here. All right, so um, right in there's where I've got that thing breaking. So if I rotate this around, go right about there. That's where I got it breaking. Um, you know, it's matching. Looking down here, right up there by the nose. So I like that a little better. These eyes, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, these eyes. What is that song? Speaking of speaking of eyes. <laughs> My pajamas, Dad. Talk about some pretty eyes. God, stop. I'll only show your eyes. No. Okay. All right, she won't, she won't let you see her eyes. I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> oh, there she goes. <laughs> Let's get out some eyes and see what eye, because it's a target. It's a, it's kind of like the bull's eye on the dartboard for a, 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 a fish that's a um, predator. All right, so I like that size right there. I think that'll work. It's probably just a hair under, I mean a hair over uh, the realistic size. Now on the fatling, if you remember that video, <coughs> I, uh, I didn't carve them very deep. But on this one, I'm going to because I may want a splash of red down in that gill. You know, I, I always imagine that when a... a a predator is chasing after its prey. You know, the prey is panicking, and of course, you know, you can't panic without breathing. <laughs> so you gotta flare your gills and get some oxygen. We probably don't see that, you know, we don't know that that's happening in nature, but I bet you it is. I could be wrong. I mean, you know, you think about it, they really need their gills. They need a streamlined shape to be able to swim fast, so maybe they hold their breath or something when they're darting away, but... And for you guys who don't know what I'm doing here, I'm carving, what I'm carving, I mean, this is, I call it white wood, um, but it's actually PVC board, and you can get this at Home Depot. It's, um... Used in the exterior trim of a house when you're building a house. You know the the mullet has pretty pretty simple gill. There's not a whole lot going on to it. It's uh, kind of surprised me when I study it a little bit. I'm like, eh, you know, it's pretty basic, straightforward. And maybe that lends itself to that fleeing thing, that speed. It doesn't have a lot of detail because that might create resistance. Who knows? Because this is going to be a topwater bait, I really want that deeper cut right underneath there. So, you know, you can imagine this thing swimming along and, you know, Snook's down here and he looks up and he sees that red gills flaring and this thing kicking and flopping and fwaying. And here I just punch those eyes in real quick and then sand those edges down so it kind of just tapers that hole a little bit. Makes a better eye socket. This is just an old jaw for a vise, and I tape my airbrush holder on it so I can move it around. It's heavy enough where I don't, you know, accidentally knock it off. But I use that in a dial rod. This is just a dial rod I got here, about a three-quarter inch dial rod. And I just start working it back and forth. And because I got it taped down, it doesn't move on me. So I can really go back and forth on it and work it. And that notebook being, you know, several pages thick, you know, it, it's soft enough to let that foil absorb that metal and I can really get a good uh, good scale pattern
when I'm peeling off my paper, if I can roll the paper and leave the foil flat, I don't curl up my foil. So I hold that down and pull it back. And uh, don't want it all off yet. But So I'll start like that. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, front to back, it was this way. And I get the, the tail just gently touching so I can still rotate it a little bit. Get it lined up. Uh, right there. <clears throat> and I put pressure on just my thumb. Right? Now see how wrinkles starting right there? I'll just work into the middle of that wrinkle. And just slowly work it back. I'm starting to get a few wrinkles there. I just kind of get to the middle of that wrinkle. Every time I see a wrinkle start to form, I go to the middle of it. So it's dividing it into other smaller wrinkles. And that's what you want. You want as small wrinkles you can get. Really, you want none, but you know that's impossible in most baits. And as I mentioned, I took a little piece of soft copper here and made me a tool. So I can slowly start working those little wrinkles out. And if I've got one that's kind of standing up, I lay it this way and push that wrinkle down. That really kind of helps. Once I get her down good where I don't feel like I'm going to tear or wrinkle anything, I put a lot of pressure on her and keep moving this because it'll build up with aluminum and start dragging. But you can kind of slide it forward as you're doing it. Get it on some fresh copper. And you can work that down in that foam almost with very little transition. Okay, instead of foiling this um, head area, I think I'm just going to clear coat it and sand it because, you know, the, there's not a lot of detail to add to a mullet's gill plate. So, I think that's what we'll do. We'll just add a little UV resin, you know, and uh, I'll show you a little trick I do on the back as well. Um, you know, I'm not really symmetrical on my tape here on the back, so I can take and and cut that to where I'm more symmetrical. You know, I'll just take a razor knife and work it back through there so that I've got about the same distance from center. Doesn't have to be exact, but anyway, I'll take my, my resin and I'll put some on the back and head. Right, and I'll work it over to the foil. Okay. And it may take a couple coats, but then I'll take my finger and make sure there's none really on the foil. And then I'll put that in the in the light and cure it real quick. And then uh probably give it another coat and sand it but anyway I'll get there won't be a step there where my foil drops off it'll just be smooth it'll just fade to a smoothness I can always go back and, and shoot me a blank like this and say oh yeah I, I'm just gonna make a glide bait out of it or maybe I'll shoot soft plastic and add a paddle tail but once I've got my little uh, mullet shape I might as well have a mold of that because there's a lot of different things I can do with it and who knows what we'll think of next. You guys commenting and coming up with ideas. I get all, all kinds of emails and messages of people. Have you ever thought about this? you think about that? This, this, I love this stuff, man. This is so cool that we can, we can interact together on this YouTube channel. Kind of cool. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Okay, we got this rascal. Blanked out, ready to be, uh, I'm ready to make a body mold of this thing. Um, so now we just need to make us a little quickie mold. Just so that I've got, you know, just a little bit of rubber all the way around. Okay, I like taking and drilling a couple holes at each end. They're like 3 8 diameter just so I can start my jigsaw. And uh, you'll see here when I start cutting, you get a little bit of smoke. That's probably more because of the 
plywood having varnish on it already versus it being dull. Here I just basically stack the two pieces together and trace it onto the second piece and then cut him out too. Okay, time to make a clay base. Oh, seat this, seat the old lure in. And uh, I guess there's actually, I've never run across it, but there's actually a, a, a modeling clay that doesn't work well with silicone. I think it's got sulfur in it. So you wanna make sure you have a sulfur free modeling clay. I think that's what I've, I've heard over the years. All right. Now, when I feather this clay out against there and create that parting line, I like to take me something like a popsicle stick and uh, basically I'm going to try to cut it to where I've got a little, just a little bit of angle on it and then I uh, sand it down. I put just a little angle on it because, you know, when I'm laying it in there, I can get that point against there. I use wood. It's a little bit softer than metal, so I don't scratch the part. You got to be careful not to gouge, especially when you got foil scales on there. If they ran around the belly, you know, you'd want to make sure you didn't mark them up. You know, roll it out real thin. If you got low spots, you know, just lay it in there. And then you're going to mash her down like so. And when you mash it down, if it's sticking to your popsicle stick, you can lube your stick up and you know, just take a little Vaseline. And I'll do that anyway. I'll uh, I'll lube up the clay once I get her pretty close. I'll lube it up good so that I can get a real nice smooth finish on it. Because your parting line is pretty critical. I mean, if you want if you want to spend all day sanding your part, you know that's fine. You don't have to worry so much about it. But you know if you want to you want to pull your part out and just do the light sanding. You need to make sure you got a good parting line. It's nice having that wood frame. You put that pressure down and you're going to create a plane. You know, you're supporting your tool with that wood. Use a nice, smooth, nice, smooth ride in there. And one thing I want to point out too is, is when I lay this down there, sometimes little pieces of clay roll up there. You got to make sure you get those off. And you can just let the weight almost of the popsicle stick, not much more than that, because you don't want to dig into your clay, uh, your parting line. Q-tip, that'll do the same thing. You know, get a Q-tip in there and get her cleaned off good. And then, you know, of course, make sure you got this wiped down good. You know, you don't want any imperfections because if even your fingerprints will show up on that silicone rubber. Isn't that amazing? Someday there'll be a crime solved because some guy didn't get his fingerprints off his lure. I use Mold Max 60 and it's three parts to a hundred part. So it's a hundred parts of rubber and three parts of um, hardener. Ah, went over a little bit, but that's all right. When I mix this, I try to, first thing I try to do is expose the bottom because all that hardener can get down in there where it's hard to mix. Mix it slow. Try to chase that hardener around, get them sides scraped real good. Pour your rubber from one end and you stretch it out thin, you're gonna have the least amount of bubbles. So what I like to do, is once I start, I can see where it's hitting. I go way up in there and let it stretch that rubber out. And I let it, uh, 
the rubber that's piling up there pushing the rubber along that part. You know, this is just kind of like going to make me a couple bodies here and there for doing different lures. It's got them all poured up. Let's just let him dry. See how the first half come out. And again, I always recommend you push down on the clay when you so you don't pull part out of the rubber. Yeah, looking good so far. I like to take and uh, make sure I grease it up good kind of a, a soft but you know not too soft a brush you know so I can work some uh, release agent in there which is to me really the best release agent for the rubber is going to be Vaseline but I also um, hit it with a little bit of this uh, uh, epoxy paraffin it's called ultra release XP One more good look. See, one one thing can happen too. And I think it did right there, just a little bit. Is that foil kind of bubbled up when I when I pulled this clay off of it? It pulled a little bit of foil loose right there, and I'm just working it down with my finger. Okay, it's time to put the screws back in. Oh, something else I do too, and I'll show you why. I take uh, a little bit of masking tape. And I put it on here as a spacer. And what this will do, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but if not, uh, what this will do is it'll space the wood frame apart so that when you shut it, your parting line is touching. Um, and of course, the wood will touch too, but you're getting more pressure on your parting line. Because ideally, that's what you want. You want your parting line to. Um, touch before the wood. So these are just spacers basically. It doesn't matter. I don't want to fill everything in, but I want it to be spaced up a little bit. Now if you'll notice this rubber is a little bit chunkier looking and <laughs> what happened there is is that I got too much hardener in there and it started to fire off before I started spreading it. Christmas, Christmas time is here. <laughs> this is like Christmas time for me when I was a kid. I'm going to open this bad boy up, and if it's a good one, it's a great day. Oh, yeah. Let's see how this side comes out. Let's push up on the back. Yes. Yes. Looking good. Awesome. Okay, it's time to pour a plug. Okay, now as far as figuring how much resin this will take, there's a couple ways you can do it. One of them is to just take a little water and pour it into one half. Take that, you know, half watts there and dump it into a cup and just measure it and say, okay, that's half as much as I need. Well, because I add micro balloons and my resin is going to be two part I end up needing to know how much A, how much B and how many micro balloons so what I end up doing is I say to myself well I'm going to start with a buoyancy rate of so what I do is I say okay I'm going to do a 50-50 ratio so if I have a cup that's this full of A then I put that much micro balloon in there so I can actually take water and fill, say, say I know it's going to take that much A and that much B, so, and, you know, my micro balloon's 50-50, so I'll have two of these that's micro balloon, so a total of four of them, I'll fill it up with water four times, dump it into a container, say like here, I just save applesauce containers, and so I'll dump four of them in there and put a marker on there. So I can always check and see if my resin is about where I anticipated it to be. What happens is it's going to be less because the micro balloons will not double the size. It, they'll absorb into the uh, resin. So you won't quite get 
volume wise the same once it's mixed you won't double it so if I take this much A and this much micro blooms I will not get twice this much volume it'll be a little less so I overestimate it so if I know my my amount here I'll just kind of bump it up 10 to 15 percent and just that's usually just a guess to get started I only had a little bit left that's perfect that's what I want I want just a little bit left in the cup I don't want to try to hit it perfect every time it's just you know it's not the way to do it you want to just almost use up all your resin now if I have to stop mix up more resin because I didn't have enough I'll make a note of that as well and raise my line so that's kind of just some tips about how I figure out what I need for resin the engineered angler is uh, somebody I followed from the beginning of his channel he is an, he's an engineer by trade and he will give you math formulas basically how to figure out your volume um, and you won't have to finagle around like this old hillbilly here does <laughs> I recommend his channel. I re recommend you checking him out. His name's Franco. He's just a wonderful guy. Uh, a lot of fun to watch. Um, always coming up with you know unique ways of doing things and his own ideas for lures and just a fun channel. It's a very informative. You know he has a lot of information about clear coating and if you want to try to chrome something or whatever. So check out Engineered Angler. You won't be disappointed. Another little tip too is my resin does not come in these bottles. I bought these bottles and I use them over and over and over but this is how I, you know, I, my resin comes in gallons of, of jug, gallon jugs and so I put it into these little containers like this and what that does is give me a lot more control when I'm filling up. Okay, so I take my two resins, get my A, and I'll fill it to the line and I go just just past my line a little bit on the A I want just a little bit more hardener than, than not and then on the B I go right to the line and I tap it a couple times and then wipe it and you don't want to breathe this stuff it's very tiny and it's hard for your lungs to get rid of it so I've got exhaust sucking that stuff out Okay. So now those micro balloons may have floated up. So I want to mix it one more time right before I pour. Not enough to stir up a bunch of big air bubbles in there, but I just want to keep them micro balloons suspended. I might have enough. Be close. Something I should have done was I should have uh, put Vaseline all around them sides. I may be sorry about this. I may just glued the wood together. That was an oversight. But we're going live here. I'm gonna let you see how problems can arise. <laughs> let you see how real, really lame I can be at times. Still a little, just a little tiny soft. That's not too soft to handle, but all right. I'll show you how buoyant that 50-50 is. We'll go put it in the water real quick. You sink floats about like I would say that's real close to poplar wood, maybe uh, pine. You know, pine might be a little little less dense than poplar, so that might be pine. But uh, you know, it's floating at about 50% of its mass, maybe a little more. Probably about 55%, maybe 60% of its mass is under the water. So it's it's going to be plenty durable enough. But uh, I think that's a good ratio to start with. And see, that gives you some room to play. So if I if I end up, in the end, if I get all my components in there and I say, man, that's just sitting a little too deep in the water, well, I can just add more micro balloons. You know, I just raise the line on my, my container and recut me a new container and so that I can lighten the load on this rascal. Okay. That 
came out so nice. Alright, I'm going to need some lines. We're going to cut this thing into three pieces. So about right there. And this is just a test, but about right there. Alright, I got me some clay here that's a little bit soft. Nuked him up a little bit. Put him in the old microwave. Okay. As far as the angle goes, I'm just kind of looking at my pencil line, that little V line I drew underneath there, and that's kind of what I'm following. I think I will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, if I want to transfer, I want, I want eyelets in here. I know I need a, two eyelets in here that are going to be my hinge. Okay? So, I don't want to put them way up here where I don't have any structure left. I want to come down a little bit. So I'll start down there and then I'll do the same about the belly. See right there. So there's going to be a thickness to them so I'll make my thickness on this slot something like that. Something like that. Okay so I mark it on one side and I get it lined up flush top and bottom and then I just kind of work a little bit because all I need is a hint of where those are hitting. See there? Now I know I'll, I'll bury my eyelets in there. I want this to rotate like this. If I put my eyelets in here and, and the pin up here, then it's, it's going to try to rotate around that pin and hit these sides. So I want it to rotate back here where you know it makes the most sense so the eyelets will go in this head part and they will stick out and these will be slots and it will go together like oops like so and there will be a pin going through probably about right in there I want to use two here because this is going to be a salt water bait and I don't want something tearing it up first cast So back to back, right, okay. Get them flush. Back and forth a little bit. There we go. I want to point something out real quick. When I'm cutting a slot, the the hard thing to do is to keep your your bit wants to climb because it's turning one direction it wants to climb on an angle so what I do is I make like three holes and then I stay out at the surface and just kind of connect them and then work my way back and forth that way you don't have so much of that crooked climbing pulling stuff going on can't have that something else I want to point out here too while I'm cutting these holes is that you know it's a pretty rough slot when I'm done uh, you know I'm using a ball mill but I come back and take a little file and flatten everything out make it smooth. And here I've just mixed up some more of the resin with the same mixture, 50-50 ratio. And I'm using it as the glue to glue in the uh, eyelets. Now this can be a little tedious. Uh, and it can be a little difficult to get the resin down into these holes. And one thing you got to make sure of when you're doing this is that you've cleaned the hole good. Um, you know, using a Dremel tool and grinding those holes in there, you're going to leave a lot of dust. And that dust will kind of, it'll almost turn to a, um, a paste almost like, uh, it won't come out until you take something, you know, abrupt, you know, something like a wire and shove in there and, and, and get it broke up so you can get it out. But uh, I take a wire and I try to work it from one side and let the air escape as it fills. And once it, you know, I get it good and full, um, you know, then, then I don't have to worry about the part, the uh, eyelet ever coming out. 
and also um, you know when you're putting these in there sometimes it makes sense to dip your eyelet in a little resin too just to you know force more into the into the slot and you so say that's what I'm doing there and it works out pretty good because you know this stuff will secure kind of slow and as it starts to get soft it's a little bit like Bondo before it's completely set I can go ahead and kind of trim it up put these eyelets in like this is I, I put a pin in there and I lay it on the side a little bit and I make sure they're the same distance Okay, well that's still somewhat soft. I can come back in and cut that excess off. Got to be careful not to distort or move my uh, eyelets. Got plenty of movement here. Now to drill this hole for the pin, um, I have to realize that um, I, you know I'm not really shooting for the center of that because the the wire I'm going to use is probably going to be something along the diameter of this, say like 60 thousandths. Okay, so that wire, when it goes through there, it's going to be resting against the back of that eyelet, like so. So what I need is my hole to reflect that. As I take a couple popsicle sticks, I know I at least want it that far away. And then I go to the slot below it, and I say, okay, I think that hole looks like it's going to hit. It looks like it's going to hit right about here. And there again, I, I need to establish that center point, uh, which is going to be about right there. So right at that intersection, that's where my hole would be. If I wanted it, you know, to not be in the center of that eyelet when it's back that far, but to be toward the back and that looks right to me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a shot of that but that's kind of how I figure out where I want my pinhole. It really needs to be straight. So I'm able to follow my pencil line um, this way but to get it this way I, I have to get through that first section and then I gotta rotate it like this and say yeah I'm, I'm lined up this way Am I lined up this way? Yeah, it looks like I am. Go back, check this way. I'm still lined up. This way I'm lined up. Looks good. I call that a bullseye. <laughs> That's a winner winner. Chicken dinner. Okay, so now that I got my hole drilled, I'm going to cut me on a pin. And it doesn't have to be uh, exact length because I want to be able to take it in and out. Let's see if that's too thick. That's some thick wire. And that's that'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that a little long. Not much, but enough where I can grab a hold of it. Okay. Okay, I like it. Now see, I, I want probably a little more movement than that. So I've got two options. I can sand this surface on a little bit tighter angle, or I can break this one off and make it less angle. So I can come in here and do a little bit of both. I can say, okay, I'll take some off of this side. And well, I think I'll take some off of this side. Okay, now what I like, you can't, maybe I can hold the camera down here, but what I like is, is that that thing almost do 90 degrees, and it's got a long way to go. Um, so, it may have a little more that way, and it does that way, not much, but I'm going to open up that joint a little more and try to get that thing to almost be like that. Alright. I'll tell you another little tip about sanding. For me, I, I buy these sanding discs that are adhesive on the back, and then I fold them in half, 
and you know that gives you the grip you know so you're holding your sandpaper and it's it's everywhere you're touching your fingers you've got grit so it works out really good I love it hey I like it I like it a lot I think we about got it well I get some fins on there so probably looking at Sketching some fins off of there because I forgot to keep those that other drawing I did. Okay, so I take and trace these fins that I want their shape onto a piece of paper, and then I set a piece of clear 40,000 select sand over top of there, and I can trace it onto the lex sand, and then just take a pair of scissors and cut them out. Uh, you know, later I'll take a Dremel tool and kind of grind them up a little bit to the shape that's more realistic. I actually cut the bottoms of my fins the same radius as that cutting wheel so when I cut the slot it matches. It takes a little bit of finagling but you know you gotta get those slots cut the right depth that you want and then you know I get all the fins placed in and glue them in with a little bit of crazy glue. And I also want to add that you really want to sand these smooth so they don't cut your line if you hook a fish and it's the line gets across the fin. Then I also add some pectoral fins and I kind of got to bend them a little bit to follow the radius of the lure but I glue them flat on so it doesn't change the way the bait swims. Boy that's perfect. Just that hook. Wow. We got lucky with that. That's perfect. The middle section Oh, we got a long way to go with that. So, let's just see what uh, what we need and where we need it. So I just take a rubber band with a little tiny copper wire or bread tie wire, whatever you can get your hands on. Okay, so I've got two 1 8 ounce sinkers. Let's try that. Boy, that's about it. It's a little too heavy. So, uh, one eighth ounce sinker. That's about right. Yeah. Uh, just moving back a little bit. Moving forward a little bit. Now I put the pin in there. Let's see, that's something else we got to do. We got to put the pin back in because that's gonna that's gonna weigh it back down on the front. That's it. Right there. So that thing's hanging straight down, it's hanging straight down from there. So the middle's right there. So I'm going to drill a hole big enough to put that in. And what I'll do is I'll crush that down and put a slot in there instead of a hole. Right there. That's perfect. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to drill in from right behind that fin back up underneath there a little bit and see if I can't get this thing to go in there. Mm. Hey. That book, what do you want? What's going on, man? First day of practice. Well, summer camp. Oh, really? Coaching, huh? Coaching seventh and eighth grade football. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, yeah. Oh man! So did you? You tell them that you're getting ready to start double sessions here, ain't they? <laughs> double
All right, I'll let that set up. Sand him down. Okay, let's give him a close shave here. See if we can't get him looking respectable again. Won't be long now, he'll be out there mulling around. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do to this, I've got it primered white. But the first thing I'm gonna do to it is get me a, a base coat of my uh, silver color I like. And the way I do that is I take a little bit of UV resin, just a little bit here and there, and put on a really thin, uh, you know, just making, basically making it sticky. Allow my pigment that I'm going to put on to adhere to this. And then, of course, you know, I'll stick it in the light and cure it. Man. That looks so good. <laughs> I want to add that I could have put this in a gun and sprayed it, an airbrush, but the pigment, some of it's pretty large and it sometimes gets my gun clogged. So I like doing it this way, it's uh, no hassle. Just putting a light coat of blue, a translucent blue on the back, just to catch that hue that they have. And then I add a little pink, a little fluorescent pink to the nose and the belly. And I like to add a little black at the eye socket. Um, it makes a nice little shadow ring around the eye when the eye is installed. And then of course I just take the back and gently fade the silver into a black, you know, to a darker natural color that mullet have. Now, the next thing I'll do is paint the fins, but before I put the stripes on, this is going to be a striped mullet, I'm going to highlight the fins, the tail. I use a little black there to just uh, darken the tip of the tail to give it that uh, realistic look. And you know, um, on the bottom I don't show it, but I end up adding a little white on that uh, anal fin back there to kind of highlight it and then it'll be off to the clear coat oh yeah and I forgot I'll be also making a little stencil here so that I can highlight the pectoral fins on the side of the lure so I cut me out you know just take a piece of paper cut it out to the shape of the pectoral fin line it up and then I just spray from one side and let it fade to nothing Okay, I've already clear coated the lure by just brushing on some UV and putting it in the light. And to add the stripes, I basically take a permanent marker and just draw in what I want. And what's cool is I can dampen a Q-tip with alcohol and kind of fade these stripes a little bit and then put another coat of clear on there. Or I could actually remove the stripes altogether and start over if I'm not happy with something. Now I'm just adding a little red up in that gill plate and it's nice because I have a clear coat on there so if I'm messy with the red paint I can just wipe it off. It's a water-based paint. And then once I get that the way I like it I can clear coat it again as well. Then I just add a little super glue and glue the eye in. Man these eyes look good. Alright, got him all painted up ready to ship off. Really happy with the way it came out.